What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Rad Up All Night. This was a random one, guys. This was a random one. Uh, we're going to be talking about Scream Factory to kind of help promote uh, the big Scream Factory show we have at the end of the month talking about um, year seven. I can't believe we're already on year seven. We're talking about the history of that label. You know, love them or hate them. Uh, they've had quite a career in the physical media game. And always one of the top dogs for a long time. So as we start kind of trailing into these later seasons, you can start seeing a little bit of a shift in some of the releases they were doing. Uh, me as a collector and, you know, how my mindset had changed towards the, the company at that point. So it should be a cool interaction, cool talk. So I figured getting that a little top of mind for all you guys, why don't I just showcase 10... Uh, non-collector's editions that Screen Factory put out that I think you guys should check out. Now, I could do many parts of this. This could be part one. Uh, so I just snagged like 10 real cool non-collector's editions uh, of movies that I really like. Some in here, some of you guys have probably heard of. Some maybe not. Um, and the second thing is I don't know if any of these are sold out or not. I didn't go back and check. But um, it's definitely some that I think you guys should all check out. And if you hadn't seen them, if you do check them out because of my rad recommendation, then uh, hit back uh, this video up in the comments. And let me know what you thought about some of these titles. So I can do that. And I can also uh, chat with you guys. So chat up with all of you. It's, um, what is it? Stone Cold Day today. It's St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. So uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Um It'll be St. Patrick's Day as we kind of roll through the stream here tonight. But uh, I want to see who's kind of in the house uh, now and uh, see what's going on here. All right. Mick Hara first in the chat. What is going on, man? Joe Reese, how are you? Mick Hara says we're all chanting. Oh, hell yeah. 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 That's what you guys are doing? I appreciate that. Dynamite Tiger, the man, the myth, the legend, the one behind the song that you just heard as we led into Rad Up All Night ace what's up man i'm doing well how are you doing eric samuel perry how are you tonight slipcover steve i'm expecting some slipcover talk tonight my guy uh actually we're not gonna be doing any slipcover talk tonight because i'm gonna be talking about uh non-collector's edition screen factory titles that i think you guys should uh definitely check out and you know with them and their non collector edition there are no slip covers on any of these editions so we definitely will not be talking about slip covers tonight but Keep your eyes and ears open. There'll be some slipcover talk uh, in my realm uh, very, very soon. So um, I'm glad you're here, though. Movie Misfits, what's up, man? Go check out Movie Misfits. Chris over there. Go check them out. Do I sound tired? I'm actually not that tired, actually. I mean, it's it's been a long day, but um, I didn't work today. So just did a lot of like stuff around here. Um, I'm always kind of doing some work. I'm, I was working on the, the new studio and new room and stuff. So um, to be honest, that room tour could be pretty much filmed next week. So then it just becomes an editing thing. And um, on that tour, like I did on my first one, I'm going to have someone edit it. A little fan say for you guys. So that might take a little bit. But um, how about this? My birthday is the beginning of April. So let's say i'm gonna try to have room tour two to coincide with my birthday so that's the plan that's the plan mike wolf wolf it's a book by thomas wolf do you guys know what that's from blu-ray addict what's up zombie madness what's going on give me a hell yeah <laughs> yeah we are gonna just chill tonight guys it's a it's an easy stream uh it doesn't take much thought on these streams it's just kind of chit chat bullshit talk about some stuff um if you haven't checked out the um the vinegar syndrome show we did thursday night definitely go back and check that out those are always fun times kind of a super show there's a lot of people in the chat there was like i think at one point maybe 300 maybe but uh it was it was really really cool and then uh, if you guys haven't checked out the Rad Pack podcast, we did an episode ranking the Leprechaun films, which is fun as hell, too. So you can check that out over on the Rad Pack pod on YouTube if you have not checked that episode out. I'll probably post some stuff about it tomorrow, re-promoting it for uh, St. Patrick's Day. 
Am I picking up Navy Seals on Vincent? Um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest. I've never seen the movie ever. I actually never even heard of it, to be honest with you. I It just never crossed my path. It's not really the type of movie that I would have really had seen and was like, oh, I'm interested in that. It just, it just isn't. So I may have passed by it at some point and just kind of just kept scrolling, but I've never seen it. Um, now doing a little bit of research and talking to a couple people, um, the soundtrack is really cool. Really early nineties, late eighties vibe, uh, some epic tunes on there. And it's also one of those VSUs, which I collect. So I don't own it. I've never seen it. It's a VSU and I'm collecting all of them. So I am going to get it. Yes. Now, um, my plan is to go to the vinegar syndrome store the day they release it. So, which means I don't have to wait for shipping, which would be great. So then I can get home and, you know, check it out right away, showcase them right away and, and help you guys decide if it's something you want to grab just based on, um, the quality of, of how it's put together. Is any, does any of these new titles have any cool, unique boxes and all this other stuff too? So, um, that's my plan. And let's kind of see if I can get through with it. Go through with it. <laughs> Gus, what's up, man? Uh, absolutely not. I don't own any Scream Factory pins. What's up, horror collector? Witch Hunter, what up? Let's see. L.A. Jewel in the house. What's up, man? Thank you for being here. May! What's up, what's up, what's up? Oh, hell yeah. Oxy Shred and Slime. What, where are you at? Because it's like midnight here. So are you chugging these suckers right now? Um, I love the, I love Oxy Shred, the Slimer ones. I think that they taste great. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to. Um, you know, there's certain parts of the collecting that I do for completion purposes. Um, not all. But there's, there's little things that I'm like, you know what? I just want to have all these. Um, and the VSUs are one because I have all these like nice cases and, and stuff to put them in. And um, So sadly, I'm going to have to check it out. I'm going to have to get it. Mike Wolf. Okay. If you would have asked me as a kid or as a teenager, I would have said T2. But as an adult, I say the original Terminator is better. Um. <laughs> I haven't seen it. You have the VHS. Um, I've heard mixed things about Navy SEALs, actually. I've heard a lot of people say it's good, and I've heard some a lot of people say it's bad. Um, That is the plan, yes. Yes. What's up, Tiana? How are you, kid? Um, well, then you better hit that bell, brother. But to hit that bell. Everybody hit that bell for notifications. Um, I assume some people are, I think, because, I mean, there were people in here as soon as I went live and already had commented. And, I mean, I literally just put the, the thumbnail up like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I don't like that, but uh, I don't know if that's you trying to tell me that's worth getting. I don't know. Movie fan, what's going on? Do I like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? Yes. Am I getting... I know it's getting a 4K. Am I going to get it? No. I have the Criterion Blu-ray, and I'm fine with that. What up? Musing Macabre. Thank you for joining. I'm glad you are here live with me. I saw a picture of Late Night with the Devil, but I haven't um, checked it out yet. I don't know anything about it. Oh, really? You're in Australia? 10 minutes from WWE? That's awesome, man. You big Rhea Ripley fan? Because she is, in my opinion, probably the best thing in wrestling today. Saturn Video. Thanks for coming in, man. It's been a little while since I've seen you chime in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You do have the notification bell on. Maybe it's just me, like, because I do it so last minute. Maybe a lot of people's YouTubes don't get the notification right away because I literally made the decision to come on here. 15 minutes ago and i made like a quick thumbnail posted it and i came on so like maybe that's why i literally set it up like 15 minutes ago i skipped paying my wife's boyfriend's child support. <laughs> that makes more sense that makes more sense all right guys keep keep uh asking questions keep chatting it up i'll get back to the chat i'll start digging into these a little bit 
Um, let's see. All right. Take a little swig here. All right. This is a mid nineties flick. Uh, some of you have probably seen this. It's not one that's talked about quite often when it comes to werewolf movies, but for people that are kind of been in the horror game for a while and are into werewolf movies, you probably have heard of this one and, um, it's Bad Moon. So Bad Moon is a real, real cool werewolf movie that I feel like kind of gets under the kind of gets a little bit under the radar when you talk about like things like The Howling, an American uh, werewolf in London, a uh, Wolfen. So to me, it kind of fits with like Wolfen, like in that like lower tier, you know, werewolf movies. But like a top tier werewolf movie. But you always think of Howling and American Wolf, like those the the big two. I feel like this and Wolfen kind of can come in like that that slot right underneath. And um, it's really cool. And it's got the kid from Dennis the Menace in it. And he's got this pet dog. And there's actually a fight scene between the werewolf and a dog. It's actually really, really cool. Um, Trying to think who the mother is. I know her from somewhere. Is it the chick from Baywatch? Let me just see. Um, I can't, I can't see the lights. Sorry, the lights in my eyes, but. Um, but I know, yeah, the, definitely the kid from Dennis the Menace is in this, but, um, it's a great, great flick, uh, mid nineties, really, really cool. If kind of often overlooked, but people that have seen it, people always throw, if you're talking about werewolf movies, people are always, some, you'll always hear somebody say like, what about bad moon? So it's got a good reputation for the people that have seen it. Um, now if you haven't, now might be a good time to kind of write it down and be like, Hey, maybe I'll uh, check that out. Is it still available from Screen Factory? I don't know, but a lot of the times they do have sales on a lot of these non-collector editions. So that's why I wanted to do it mostly on this because maybe there's some hidden gems in here that you guys are like, you know what? That was on sale. I'm going to snag it. Bad Moon is one that I highly recommend you guys checking out. Let me see what you guys have to say about uh, Bad Moon. Um, da, 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 da. Wow, people are chiming in. All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wow, we got a lot. <laughs> We get a lot of people coming in. Um, I mean, Saturn brain scan. Is this one of them I'm talking about tonight? No, because I did look at it and I said, you know what? I've got too many in here that I think people, most people might know. So I put it back. But again, this is part one. I'm going to do more of these. And brain scan is probably, it could be my favorite non collex edition movie in Screen Factory's library, to be honest with you. I absolutely love Brain Scan. Um, we're going to be talking about Brain Scan on the Rad Pack podcast later this month. So, like I said, if you're not subscribed over to the Rad Pack pod, do it now on YouTube. Uh, we're going to be talking about that movie later in the month. What's up, Hagen K? Watched Street Fighter the other night with Van Damme. Fun watch. Yes, it is. I remember seeing that in the theaters. And funny story... You know, being like a like a younger teenager, I think I was like a preteen when that came out. And I went with my brother and my friend Mark. And I can remember we were waiting for our parents to pick us up. And my friend Mark thought it would be funny to like try to spoil the movie for people. Like, you know, we're stupid preteen kids like acting up. And we're standing outside the movie theater like waiting for a ride. And he was like, and there was like a lot of people going in for Street Fighter. My friend Mark's like, oh, man, remember at the end when, like, Bison, like, died? And, like, he's explaining, like, what went on and stuff. And people were like, shut up. Like, they were getting pissed. And I'll never forget that story because I can remember just thinking back on it now. And I'm like, dude, we, and I'm sure you guys all remember when we were kids. Like, we did stupid shit, man. Stupid, dumb shit. But uh, that that always reminds me of Street Fighter because I can remember my friend Mark doing that. And, Mark, if you're watching, you know. Because I think sometimes he might tune in. Um Bad Moon. Hell yeah, he likes it. Oh, LA Jewel hasn't seen it. Recommended. There you go. Look at that. Uh, definitely want to check out, man. Bad Moon is fun. Love Bad Moon. Let's see. A dog's point of view of a werewolf movie. Bad Moon's great. Sounds familiar because the dog fight. Yeah, you might have seen it on like. I didn't have HBO and stuff when I was a kid, but a lot of some titles that I talk about, people are like, oh, that was on HBO a lot as a kid. Okay, so it's still available. I would grab it. Uh, it's on Tubi. Awesome. Frank Castle, what's up? Oh, thanks, man. 
Dude, you want to hear something funny? Speaking of a great story, another cool story. This is so old, man. This is like, I don't know. I got this in like 96, maybe. I don't know when this first Scratch logo came. It was 96 or 97. And funny story was my uncle and I got ticket. Well, my uncle got me and him tickets to go see WWF at what was called Foxborough Stadium at the time. It's called Gillette Stadium now. It's where the Patriots play. And it was going to be the first ever event at this stadium. And it was going to be on the football field. And it was going to be called Foot Brawl. And it was a WWF like special event. And my uncle and I got front row tickets for this thing. I don't remember why, but it ended up the whole show got canceled. It like the whole concept Foot Brawl was canceled. The event was canceled. I don't remember if it was weather or they just like didn't want to do it. I don't remember, but it got canceled. So we got a letter in the mail from WWE saying, hey, we're very sorry. This event was canceled. You have been refunded, blah, 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 blah. And it said, here are two shirts um, on us for your troubles or whatever. And there was two of these. And so I've literally had this shirt. And on the back, it says, come get some on the back. And uh, my uncle and I got shirts. So I've literally had this thing since I was probably, I don't know, maybe in eighth grade or something like that. I, I don't know. But um, I think they were XLs when they gave them to us. So as a kid, they, this was a huge on me. So, uh, yeah, I've kept it all this time. And um, what's really cool is that a lot of these shirts that are like vintage wrestling shirts are pretty valuable now. Um, I had an ECW Tammy Sitch, a.k.a. Sonny shirt that I wore one time that I got in an ECW show back in the day. And on the back, it said Tammy Becomes Extreme, and it's B-E-C-U-M-S. And um, I remember wearing it one time, and that was it. I left it in my drawer. I didn't wear it again. And not too long ago, when I started to see, and I have a friend that does a lot of, like, vintage resale, he was like, man, do you have any old wrestling shirts? They're worth big money right now. And I was like, actually, I do. And I think I, I think he bought some off of me. And then I showed him that one. He goes, oh, my God, dude. He goes, it, he goes, that's in mint condition. I said, yeah, man, I wore it one time. It's never even been washed, I don't think. Because I literally probably wore it for like, I don't know, maybe like an hour or two or something like that. Maybe at the show, I think, was the only time I might have worn it. So I ended up selling it online for $500 for a T-shirt of Tammy Sitch from like 1990, I don't know, might have been 98, uh, whenever she left WWE and went to ECW. But I just thought it was wild. So speaking of like old wrestling shirts, if you guys have old wrestling shirts, uh, they're back in style, so, so uh, you can wear them. They're pretty rad. And if they don't fit anymore, I would really look at, look at the condition of them and, and selling them because uh, people are after this stuff now. Like I have a friend who's really into this stuff and like celebrities buy off of him. That's how like big this uh, this vintage stuff is going for now. Um, sorry for my rambling, guys. Um, Joe Reese is the guy who plays Freddy. Plays Jason Freddy versus Jason. The oh, really? I had no idea that was a question. That's crazy. Joe Stradamus, what's up? Likes Bad Moon, classic werewolf movie. Adrian James, what's up? It's still Bill. I put in my car in every sale. That's funny. Am I picking up the Crow Salvation Blue? Probably not. It's probably not. Oh, heck yeah. I love both of them. I saw Primus was one of my first concerts as a kid. Um, and it's actually funny because speaking of the Rad Pack channel, we interviewed Spider One, who is Rob Zombie's brother, horror and director, writer and director of horror movies now. He's got one coming out called Little Bites. He just did two movies a couple of years ago, Allegoria, Bury the Bride, which I like both of those a lot. And I'm excited to see what his next installment is. We interviewed him on the Rad Pack podcast, and I talked about that concert with Primus because Power Man 5000 opened for them. And I think I was like a freshman in high school, and I remember going, and I saw Power Man 5000 for the first time opening for Primus, and I remember buying the CD, which I still own, and I showed him uh, in the interview. So if you guys haven't checked out that interview, it's on the Rad Pack podcast audio platform and the YouTube. We have a video portion of it, but pretty cool story revolving Primus. My friend Mark who was the same kid who I talked about before at the Street Fighter thing. Primus was like his favorite band. So we were really heavy into Primus. 
What's up, Wiley? Um, just on YouTube. But you know, it's just it's kind of just part of the the gimmick of of the born to be rad character, I guess. But the headband thing is something that I've worn a lot in my life. Uh, I've talked about this before. Uh, I you know, being a kid of the 80s and, and seeing things like the Karate Kid and the headbands being such an important part of Daniel LaRusso, uh, being big into wrestling where, you know, people like Macho Man Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan were wearing bandanas and headbands, um, martial arts movies being so big for us as kids. Uh, there's pictures of me as a kid with like bandanas on, headbands on. Um, and then Corey Haim, I was a big fan of, I'm still a big fan of, um, I remember reading like Teen Beat magazine or something. There was these pictures. He did like a spread or whatever. And he had like one of these black headbands on with like all these different outfits. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. That looks so cool. And um, so when I started wrestling, I did like backyard wrestling. I did independent wrestling. And my wrestling gimmick, my character always had a headband on just like this. And I kept it all the way through, through the indies and everything else. And um also, too, with my full-time job being in fitness, sometimes I'll do virtual training or I'll do follow-along workouts, and I always would wear the headband. So then when I got to YouTube and I was trying to create the whole Born to be Rad brand and the name, and I said, you know what? Let me bring the headband thing in just to be some, just to make it something different. Um, you know, be, you know, people would recognize me as either the, the dumb guy with a headband or the cool guy with the headband. I don't know, but it's still, again... To, to be recognized. Um, so it was kind of a, a, a thing. And it's funny because, you know, even when I go to conventions and stuff like that, I won't usually have it on. And then when people will, will see me and then they'll look at me, we got for a second. Cause I think at first it's like, they don't know. And then all of a sudden like Garrett, I'm like, yeah, yeah. They're like, Oh, that's da, da, da. And then all of a sudden like, you want to take a picture? I'm like, yeah, like you don't have the headband. Do you? I'm like, I do have it in my pocket. <laughs> so I'll bring it around just in case. And now people have wanted me to put it on and then take a picture. So, it's kind of become part of the channel um but also too like um i don't know it's just one of those things that's kind of become part of the channel part of the brand and at this point i was just like you know i'm just gonna keep going with it um love it i hate it i guess but yeah it's only it's only for the show oh, i love side hustle that's awesome man <laughs> I mean, dude, I'm not a big slipcover guy per se, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I mean, if they did, cool. Uh, but I think it, it's it's nice to to separate the collected editions from not, and I guess that was the best way they could they could do it. Yeah, man, it's awesome. Yeah, it did. It did. Superstition. It's not on the list this time, but it's going to be on the list at some point. Um, what up, Ben? Yeah, that's so it's different. It's definitely unique. Jesse. All right. I haven't said this yet, but guys, there's 75 people in here right now. Hit the like button if you have not. Truly appreciate it. Definitely helps the channel out. Definitely helps the show out. If you want to share the show around uh, on your socials right now and let people know we're live and they can come chat it up with us tonight. I, I should be good on here for a bit for a bit tonight because I've got nothing on going on tomorrow. Um, and I'm pretty energetic right now, so I'm, I'm good to roll with you guys. So feel free to continue with the chat. Um, so yeah, definitely hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe as well. Did I already say hi to Jesse? Jesse, what's up? Uh, Joe Sadamas says they should bring... Yeah, I, they should, but you know that's never going to happen. Yeah, Bad Moon came out in 96. Yep. <laughs> what's up, man? <laughs> WWF, hell yeah. Uh, yeah, if I have to pick my favorite wrestling era, it's like 87, 88 till about 92. That's probably like my favorite chunk right there. Yeah, man, those things are probably worth a little bit of coin right now. Uh, let me see. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same. It was in the same location, uh, but Gillette's been all redone since then, yeah. Um, 
Well, this this one, I bought the Sunny one. This one I kept. This is the free one. The Sunny one I bought at the ECW show. Um, are you getting the House of Doom box that I watched all four on YouTube and they're not that good? compared to? I've never seen any of them on that. So I'm interested because I've never seen them and I don't own them. So I'm intrigued, but I, I don't know enough about them to pull the trigger on it yet. Oh, 100%. Even that. Old concert shirts, man. Definitely. Like, I remember as a kid when I'd go to a concert, I was always like, I don't want to get a tour shirt. I don't want to have all that, the tour on the back. I want to get like a regular shirt. And now you look back and you're like, you're a dumbass because the tour shirts are where it's at. The tour shirts are the ones that are worth big, big money. Oh, yeah. It's a great release. That's a great release. What up, Wild Wrangler? No, he didn't. <laughs> No, he did. No, he did. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dude, you saw. Oh, man, poor poor Spider throwing shoes at him, man. Come on. But that's rad that you get to see Typo Negative, man. Great band. Great band. Rest in peace. Oh, yeah, baby. It's coming back. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. I think Kino put that out, right? <laughs> what's up mel no just kidding mel in the house what's going on my killer podcast uh go check out mel over at my killer podcast let's get it a 3k tonight all right mel we're gonna get 3k on your channel tonight so go subscribe over there <laughs> everything else is a gimmick <laughs> i'm sure that's what a lot of people call me to be honest with you I don't know. I mean, I liked it. I think I think as a whole it was the golden it was it was the most popular years in wrestling because up until then, you know, as a little kid, wrestling was popular amongst me and a lot of kids in in, in school. And then you got to a certain point where you got into like middle school where the kids started to fade out of it or phase out of it. And there was a whole there was a couple group of kids that still really loved it, but like it wasn't as popular as it was when you were younger. So you kind of didn't really talk about it outside your inner circle. But then when the Attitude Era came, it's like everybody wanted to be a wrestling fan. And it was so wild because at the same time, you and your buddies were kind of like, what the hell? We were always here. And now everybody in the school like is a, is a wrestling fan. You know, like the, the captain of the football teams of, you know, wearing like a rock shirt or whatever. And like he could have cared less about wrestling the year before. Um, so, yeah, kind of kind of funny. Wild Wrangler, yes, it is. He's right there, and he's in mint condition. My pet monster, yes. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out my room tour video, which is like my most popular video on my channel, you got to check that out. You'll definitely see a closer look at the my pet monster. Uh, no, I, I actually buy mannequin heads for them, like the styro, the foam ones, like Al Snow used to hit around. Those, <laughs> that's what I use. And if they're too big, sometimes I'll put like a T-shirt or a towel or something like that over it or a bag or something. Um, if it, if it's having trouble like balancing or anything like that. Oh yeah. That was one of the first things I was introduced to uh, as a kid when it came to wrestling. Big Cass. Really? Interesting. I mean, I have death machine on DVD I wouldn't have probably bought it otherwise, but now that I know this has three different cuts, I may be definitely interested in this. What the hell? Wow. Look at this. Just comes in the stream and just starts talking smack. Wow. Where's my moderators? <laughs> I guess so. It is, it is my, my slip cover, I guess. Oh, my God. I'm going to tell you right now, Joe Reese, Skid Row is one of my all-time favorite bands. Um, all-time. I think that the album Skid Row, Skid Row is probably one of the, my... It's probably one of... It, it is one of my favorite albums of all time, but I think it's one of the best albums of all time from that era. Hands freaking down. Hands down. John Doe Juggalo. Go check out John Doe Juggalo, a.k.a. Jeff. Go check him out over on his channel as well. Oh, dude, so funny. So funny. All right, let's get to the next one. You guys are chatting away. There's 90 people in here. 
I want this to be another night where we get past 100. I told you one of my goals for 2024 was not only to get 10K subs. That's the sub goal. Obviously, to get more people to watch the stuff. Make sure you guys are still watching the videos. My lives do really awesome, and I feel like my recorded videos don't do as well. And it's so interesting because I feel like a lot of other channels, it's completely opposite. So I, I don't know why that is, but I've, I'm trying to get some cool um, non-live stuff out there, something different. But I I don't have a lot of time to edit, so it's like it's like an extra step for me. So that's why I don't do a lot of content like that. I like the lives more, but I know to grow the channel and to get different people involved, I should probably do both. So make sure you guys are watching the content as well. And then my other goal was to try to get 100 people uh, on these live shows on a more regular basis. We did it last time, so let's see if we can do it tonight. So share it around. Tell your friends we are live. The next movie I'm going to talk about is one that I think most of you have probably seen. And it's an 80s kind of like, it's kind of like a slasher, but kind of not. And it's called Killer Party. Um, I freaking love this movie. It's like a cross between, I would say, like kind of slasher, kind of like possession, but also kind of like, it's got like teen comedy elements to it as well, like from back then. Um, but this is awesome. When I saw this movie for the first time, there's an opening scene with like the main theme song where you have the band um, White Sister playing a song called April. And I completely fell in love with that song. And as I was watching, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to love this thing. I just know it because that song just hyped me up for what this movie could be. And I thought this movie was great. I mean, I've heard some people say it's a little slow in the middle. Um, you know, it, it doesn't drag, but it's like it's kind of setting up for something pretty cool at the end. So killer party, guys. I'm going to go back to the chat. Let me know what you think of this one. This is my second rad recommendation when it comes to non collected edition Screen Factory titles. Killer party. If you guys don't have this or you've never seen it, I highly, highly recommend checking this thing out. And especially if it's only to hear that, that song or, or look online. Uh, White Sister, the song's called April, and it's freaking awesome. Awesome song. Um, let's get back in. Let's see. <laughs> Movie Misfit says, that's how it was being a comic book nerd, and then Iron Man and Dark Knight all came out, and everybody loves Superman. That is true, actually. I was never a huge comic book guy. Uh, I did collect for a little bit of my life. I remember I loved just, my brother and I loved going to the comic book store in the mall. And we would buy things like, you know, Spider-Man, X-Men, all that kind of stuff. Spawn was really big at the time. We were buying some of that. Uh, at the time, Venom started to come out with his own books. And my brother was really heavily into that. Carnage stuff was coming out. So we started collecting all those. Um, so it's like older stuff. But yeah, I was never a huge superhero guy. Uh, I loved like the car X-Men cartoon. I love that. But yeah, everybody, everybody loves comic book movies now. Or the majority of people. It became a lot more cool to wear batman superman shirts and stuff like that now steve what up man thanks for coming in dude let me see oh man i would love it if they had the courage to release my pet monster live action movie on 4k jesus someone needs to i think that would be so killer i'd mark out for that <laughs> what's up galford's dog i appreciate your dog coming in here that's cool it looks like nanook on that picture there i remember in the late 90s my brother borrowed my wrestling action figure to go to a wrestling pay-per-view party and broke it dick how would he do something like that jesse says yeah the attitude era was huge i still remember this one kid in high school kicked the principal in the stomach no <laughs> what the hell I mean, I remember giving. I remember kids wrestling in the hallway, no question. Stunners, super kicks. And I mean, tell me if you if you grew up in that time frame and you were at school, were you not doing this? To like everybody, <laughs> everybody was crotch chopping each other in school. It was wild. What up, Matt? Thanks for popping in, man. I missed the attitude ever because it followed all the W. Uh, yeah. So you ended up following. I actually like was getting out of WCW then. Like I was more into WCW in the early 90s. 
<laughs> Chris said she is the moderator. She is one, yes. Um, let me see. Oh, hell yeah. Sebastian Park does kick ass. I saw Sebastian Bach right before uh, the pandemic hit. And he did the whole album of Skid Row, Skid Row, and it was fan freaking tastic. Witch Hunter, do I have any interest in memories? Of course. Um, I mean, from front to back, I mean, it was the the storyline for me of. Um, actually, I do have a pretty cool personal story. The evolution of Shawn Michaels, right? Like Shawn Michaels was one of my all time favorite wrestlers. He probably is all my absolute favorite wrestler of all time. You know, seeing him as world champion, you know, after he left the Rockers, became world champion, biggest baby face in the company. Then all of a sudden he started to turn a little bit heel. And then that's when DX formed and he was like such a badass heel. Um, that to me, like that whole transition with his career, it's unfortunate his career ended early at that time. But like that whole transition from like biggest baby face to biggest heel was really, really cool for me. And um, I went to an event here in my state with my friend Sean. I was in high school and we drove down there, watched the event, and one of the referees, Paul White, actually owned a bar. You've probably seen that bar on Raw thousands of times, especially in the Attitude Era. That's where like APA would always have bar fights. He owned a bar like in my town. So after the shows, when they would come around here, they'd go right to his bar. So the show ended, my friend and I like booked it down to that bar. Now we were 16 years old at the time and we had just got our license so we're down at the bar waiting for them to show up and sure enough here they all come and we get out of our cars and we've got like magazines in our hand for them to sign and they did they signed the magazines i mean i have that magazine in my home gym framed up and um i could easily come and show you guys at some point but i got like sid on it uh, i met billy gunn but at the time he was rockabilly so he wrote like rockabilly and then he asked my friend and i like if we had any sisters that he we could call fucking guy uh crush signed it triple h signed it china um i'm trying to think who else so savio vega was there and he got out of the car and gave my friend a beer and he's like here you can have it and, like we're 16 right so savio like gave my buddy sean a beer and my friends got it and he goes up to Triple H to have asked Triple H if he could sign his magazine. Triple H goes, how old are you? He goes, 16. He goes, where the hell did you get that beer? And he goes, Savio gave it to me. Triple H took that beer and like threw it and said, do not drink that. I bet he, he probably pissed in it. And then like the other wrestlers like laughed or whatever. But pretty cool story around the Attitude Era. Like this was like the beginning of the Attitude Era because I remember talking to Triple H and actually saying like, oh man, it was so cool when you and you know, to see you and Shawn Michaels team up. And he's like, oh, he's like, you know, he's like, that's just the beginning. And like kind of winked. That was like right when DX was about to start. Um, so pretty cool story about that around that time. D Shaw, thank you so much, man. Yeah, guys, if you can, thumbs up the stream. We got over 90 people in here. Keep pumping people in. Pulp Viking, good morning, everyone. This is someone who I don't see in the live streams a lot. So thank you for popping in. You're saying good morning, which means I'm assuming you probably live elsewhere where... It is top of the morning to you, but thank you so much uh, for popping in. Go live from Deadbeats again. It's the plan. We just got to find out when and where. Um, that was a fun night. That was a fun night. Trifle Night, just the Skid Rose. When I saw them as a kid, they opened for Kiss. That is sick, dude. That's kick. Movie Misfits is starting his Retro Rewind series this week, kicking off with Roadhouse. So we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, go check out Movie Misfits. He's going to be doing a little Roadhouse on his new series. Go check him out over there. Uh, he's pumping out content, man. Go check him. Magic Hands, what's up? Yeah, it is an April Fool's Day slasher. Yeah, it's cool, man. Uh, go check out Brian Goes Blue and Coco, too. Go check him out. Um, yeah, it was kind of like... It, it kind of surprised me, really, too, when I watched it. I wasn't expecting that kind of ending. Like, I was expecting this to just be a straight slasher. Oh, hell yeah, man. I'm, I'm way behind on this chat. Um, some people have not heard of Kill Party. So other people are putting it over. Dino! What's up, man? Jaskowski. Is that what I said? Jaskowski. That's what I had at first. That's what I had at first. 
Uh, yes, I have that and night school. Yes. Um, dude, I I have I have hard to die on like a DVD. Um, I don't know what the deal is with Sorority House Two, but the hard to die was always a problem. That was always a problem. Sorority House Two, I do not know why that's such a a hard one to put out. I mean, I still have the old DVD, but I don't know why that one's never made its way over. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I'm going to go on a little bit later tonight. Maybe get some new faces in here. Um, and if you're not subbed to the channel, please do guys. It's awesome to finally, you know, interact with some of the people that are watching the content. Uh, correct. I, I think rush week is actually a pretty, pretty cool movie as well. Hell yeah. Um, North with Elijah Wood. I don't. I don't. Oh yeah, man. That's that's the one I was talking about. That's that hooked me right away. Yeah, I just love that kind of music, you know. David, actually, Joe Dante returning directing. I didn't even know that. What is he doing? Because I do have a Joe Dante show. We well, we did a Joe Dante show on the Rad Pack podcast. Go check that out. And I'm gonna do another Joe Dante show that has to do with Scream Factory. That I've kind of had, like, I've been kind of putting it off. Like, I missed the window where we just did the Rad Pack show. So I was like, I'll do it right after, then I'll promote that. Then I kind of missed that window, and now I'm like, I got to get it done. But if he's going to be coming out with a new movie, like, that's a perfect time for me to try to put it in, uh, back into rotation. So let me know more about that. I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> didn't we all? It definitely is, man. It definitely is. It, it changes kind of the style of movie all the way through. Oh, yeah. The Olympic Slam was the initial original name of the finisher. Yes. Hell, yeah. I think it's it's really, really well done, that beginning. Joe Reese, uh, 8890, Flair, Sting, Luger. Dude, I freaking I love that era of WCW as well. Charlton Heston movie, Soylent Green, of course. Of course, that's a real, real good movie. I always think of that in Omega Man as like, kind of like they kind of go together um i love soylent green i think i might only have that on dvd still i'm not sure i'm sure it probably has a blu-ray um but soylent green is a really cool movie guys um what's up betamax when show michaels through the heart dude i'm gonna tell you this two times in my life as a kid when i cried watching wrestling it was when Shawn Michaels kicked Marty Jannetty through the, the glass window because I was such a huge Rockers fan. And when The Undertaker locked Ultimate Warrior in the casket and they thought he died because they're like, oh, look at the claw marks. He was trying to escape. Those two times I can still remember being on my living room floor in tears because I was so upset. Those two times in my life uh, watching wrestling. Oh, thanks, man. Hi, uh, super kick, elbow, high, eye poke the like button guys yep exactly wow pay terrible for skid in 92 that's awesome um i'm gonna pull the trigger on the killer ghost face mask from scary movie custom made that's cool man i have a scary movie ghost face mask i mean it's not it's no custom job but it's uh you know it's like the WhatsApp looking one are you serious? I missed all this. I have not seen this. That is pretty sick, though. I'm I'm down for that. I love little Shafaharas. I would love to see what he can do with it now. Oh, hell yeah. One of my favorites. Um, What are the odds? I've either seen it someone else. I mean, I'm sure if they're going to do it, it's Vinegar Syndrome. But, I mean, I, I really don't think that needs a 4K. Uh, just go get the one they have. I'm sure it's still around. I don't know why this isn't out yet. The Black Xmas from 06 should Screen Factory should have already put that on. I don't know the problem with it. Yeah, man, send it to me. I'm curious. All right, number three. This one just kind of came out. Um, I've heard some people say they love it, they hate it, or they've never seen it. And it's My Demon Lover, um, which I do highly recommend this one. This is a fun, fun movie. Um, you know, it falls in the same vein as like my boyfriend's back. If you like Lisa Frankenstein, I mean, I guess it kind of falls in these veins a little bit like with that. Um, it's, it's cool. I actually think the effects of him and the, the practical effects in this are really gnarly. Um, I think they're pretty fun. 
So this is one I highly recommend. It's kind of like a teen comedy esque horror comedy. Um, I just really think this is a fun, fun movie. Demon Lover. That's kind of new from Screen Factory. I think it only came out a couple months ago. Whoa. Almost dropped that drink there. Um, oh, that's cool with a lime green case. Nice. I should probably look for that because, yeah, I haven't, I don't, I think I've only got the DVD of it. A uh, Shock 'em Dead. Yes, I have the Blu ray of Shock 'em Dead. Um, I do like it. I actually think. That's the movie that wet movie one's father is it is it um what it doesn't even have a plant oh hollow <sighs> i mean okay i don't hate that i i kind of trust joe dante um we always still have the original we still always have the Roman moranis one so um let me see <laughs> from family ties yes <laughs> she sure does man yeah charming movie that's kind of a good way to put it. a great gateway horror film i picked it up yeah and that's another thing guys um another video i want to do and i'm not sure if i should do and, and you guys can put this down there should i do it live or should i do it recorded and that is going to be uh, talking about gateway horror movies, um, especially ones that I had, like things that were a gateway for me to really get into the genre. Now, if that's something you guys want to talk about, because honestly, when I think of all these different things, gateway, kinder trauma, those type of things just like intrigue me so much that I'm like, I just want to do such a huge epic video on these things. But, you know, then I'm like, do I do it recorded and add like screenshots and stuff? Or do I just do it live and just chat about it with you guys and find out, you know, exactly if you've ever seen some of these. Were these some of the gateway horrors or kinder trauma horrors that you uh, had as kids and growing up? Like, so there's the best of both worlds. It's like, I, I don't I don't know which one to do. But I know that that concept is something that I really want to dive hard into um, at some point because I just am so passionate about that stuff because being nostalgic and thinking about growing up and getting into the genre. There was so many times in my life that I was like, I knew I was going to love horror because of some things that I was just things that I was always attracted to when it came to either toys or TV shows or video games or whatever. Um, and it would be so cool to kind of talk about all that stuff with you guys. And uh, let me know in the comments, would you rather have it be live so we can do it together? Or would you rather have me record it? try to add some footage here and there which obviously takes me a little bit of a longer time um but yeah i'm curious because again like i said it seems like my live shows always do well my recorded shows they don't do as good as my live no way so but i do want to do more recorded stuff so i'm just curious to find out the people that are watching the content what they are um, what they prefer from this channel and leave it in the comments if you're watching this in the replay um yeah, good one. Seems like a lot of people um, like this uh, Demon Lover as well, which is good. Um, yeah, my mom's a werewolf. Yeah, I'm surprised that hasn't got re-released yet. I just have that on DVD. Um, yeah, it is a fun one. It's a fun one. The Gate was one for me too. 100% it was. I can still remember the first day I saw it. And the thing that I remember the most is that damn eyeball in the hand. That was the one thing that that movie stood out to me as a kid that I'll never forget. What's up, Nick? Thanks for popping in. I've never seen Rat Boy. <laughs> I've never seen it. You guys like the lives. You guys lives. Okay. It seems like my channel is really into the lives. Really into lives, which I I actually like to do more, um, but I just don't know how many people like it, like to watch live replays, right? Like I don't know if a lot of people that aren't involved like to watch live replays because I am talking to the chat a lot. So you know, it's like a catch twenty two sometimes, and you always try to mix it up a little bit just to kind of keep people invested and involved in the channel. Um, I love that too, guys. I really do. Like that's my preferred, but I'm trying to do what's best for for you guys, for me, the channel. Um, but yeah, okay, I'll do it live, and we're just gonna—I'm just gonna find a date. One of the one of these up all nights when I have like the day off the next day and stuff. But guys, make sure to hit the like if you're not subscribed. Again, please do. Also, go check out the Rad Pack Pod channel. I'll put the banner up because we still got a lot more to talk about, guys. If you want to hang out, I am here. I am here right now. 
Um, okay. Thank you guys for watching the live replays. I appreciate that. <laughs> Effort will do it live. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys watching. It seems like a lot of people do um, like the lives. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of the same thing. I've never seen Navy Seal, so I really can't hate on it or, or say f that. It's amazing. I can't be like, oh my god, Navy Seals or not. I've never seen it. Um, so I have a lot of. There's a lot of camp that's saying, "Damn it, why?" And there's another camp that's like, "Oh, that's a good movie, actually." So I think it's getting. It's kind of a, a polarizing release, I think. Um, agree. I'll be honest. I didn't see. I didn't see Monster Squad as a kid. I saw it later, which is weird for me. I don't know how I missed that. I love the 1972 movie Stanley. Um, I, I promote that. I think I, I don't know what show I did, but I did some kind of show where I promoted that as a vinegar syndrome title. You should pick up. Yes. Um, okay. The next one is another one. In my opinion, I'm like, most people have probably seen this one maybe, but then I'd be surprised because I don't know if they will, if they all have, uh, I have this movie poster, this one sheet. It's a cool movie. There are points in time where maybe it's a little bit slow, but it's got a great, freaking payoff guys and that is 1981's the beast within so let me know what you guys think about the beast within this was an earlier standard edition from screen factory um but this is a freaking great movie tom holland wrote this i mean tom holland is just one of the best man um i'm curious what you guys think of this one i can see people kind of being on both sides with this one but i think at the end of the day when you get to the payoff i think everybody was like holy shit that was freaking rad man <laughs> all right let's go back in time here all right let's let's i'm gonna call out vanderhoff for a second i'm gonna call him out in front of all of you guys here's the deal he asks me Garrett, do you like the 1972 movie Stanley? I says yes. He writes, I bought Stanley because you said it was good. <laughs> did you just buy it right now? Or did you buy it because I said it was good before? Because you just asked me if I've seen it. I don't know. You tell me. Did you just buy it this second? But I do like Stanley. I do like Stanley. Um, <laughs> you guys are killing me. Ah. Uh, Agree, agree. Super six best effects, kind of slow middle, entertaining creature for you. Yeah, um, I I think I've heard that a lot. Is that it does drag a little bit, um, but again, I'm I like slow burn horror as long as it, there's a payoff at the end. Um, Beast within, I would love if it did. Saying it's just okay. Yeah, man. Okay. It does make sense. And that's kind of, I, I agree because I might even forget about some and someone bring it up and be like, oh yeah, that's right. Um, maybe that's where it was. I could have. Thanks, John. The beast within. There you go. That's a great thing too. Um, beast within is awesome. One of the greatest, not really werewolf movies out there. Oh, I see what you said. Okay. <laughs> It's cool, yeah. I mean, it's cool. Um, you know, it's not... I like 70s movies like that. Like, I mean, things like Stanley. Um, trying to think of other ones like along those lines. I mean, I love a, a series called Billy Jack. Um, it's not one I've ever really talked about on here, but it's it's a series that I absolutely love. Um, from from back then and it was kind of like that slower you know burn type of thing um it's not horror billy jack's not a horror movie but neither is really stanley it just involves kind of like snakes um but i don't know I, I i like it i like it a lot um oh dude i i love the whole thing man i my uncle got me into that when i was a kid and i just fell in love with it and what was even crazy about it is that you don't hear many people talking about billy jack ever that that those movies 
And there was a movie on Netflix called like The Babysitter. And there's a whole scene where they're watching Billy Jack. And I was like, mind blown that this modern movie and these kids are like reciting Billy Jack in the movie. I was like, what the hell? Like, it felt like I was in part of some kind of like alternate planet. Like, it it was awesome. But at the same time, I'm like, what? Like, I, I was like, felt like I was tripping or something. I was like, what the hell's happening here? Like, like, why? Like, it just it just seemed so out there for something that these teenagers would be reciting in like 2021 or whenever that movie came out. But I don't know if you've ever seen The Babysitter, but it's really good. And they do this whole scene where they recite Billy Jack in like this weird like um, projector. They're watching it on a projector. It's it's freaking wild. And I did like um, a TikTok video or something on Billy Jack. And somebody comments like, oh, I guess you must have just watched The Babysitter. Like, it's so funny because I'm like, no, I've like, I've been watching this movie for like 20 years. It's just wild. But it, I'm glad to see it It actually got some love. Um... <laughs> do I enjoy Cannibal Holocaust? I haven't seen it once. It's, um, no, I do not. I've only watched it twice. I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's great. Where I don't even know how to say that. Sakaida, Kiskaida movies. Um kick his ass, Seabass. Sammy! <laughs> Elvira was very hot in her prime. Elvira still looks great. Um Nice. I I have that, but I haven't watched it yet. Oh, dude, I have not seen Major Pain since it, since the day it came out. I don't even think I own that, which is surprising. The Billy Jack series is mentioned to it, but the action and fight scenes bring it to a whole nother level. Yes, I totally agree. I'm going to take this foot, and I'm going to whop you on that side of your face. And you know what? What? It's not a damn thing you can do about it. Really? Really? Love it. Love that. Um, oh, yeah. 100%. I have it from Shout Factory. Is that who put it out, I think? It's it's so good. Um, all right. Number one, two, three, four, five. Number five. One of my favorites. If you've watched the channel a long time, you're going to know that because there's usually a poster behind me, but it's George Romero's Monkey Shines. Um fan freaking tastic movie and i talked about this not too long ago on my george romero show that i did and i said that it's this movie is one of those things that um what do they call it? a mandela effect and i did a whole tiktok video or reel or short or something about it and a lot of people agreed with me that it was only till like recently that I found out that this was not a Stephen King book. And the weirdest part about it is I have the novel and I never put two and two together. Like I never put two and two together that it wasn't Stephen King. So I'm like, what? Like I just found that out. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Like I'm like, I've seen the cover art for this. I said, Fright Rags put out a whole Stephen King line. And this was one of the shirts. I was like, what the hell's happening? And come to find out there's another move. There's another book that Stephen King did with this same cover art on it and I can't believe for the longest time I thought this was a King adaptation done by Romero and like I said I'm freaking love this movie I had George Romero and Savini sign my one sheet poster of it but I just think it's so funny and wild that I like for some reason in my brain I thought that's what this was forever until probably like like this year or last year or something like that. It was mind blowing. So I did a whole video about it. And so many people commented underneath kind of agreeing with me. I think a couple of people called me stupid as well, but um, it was just wild to see the amount of people that kind of felt the same way I did. And I think that that cover art, this cover art really threw people off because it is very similar to the cover of a Stephen King book. Um, which is crazy. And if anybody, for whatever reason, like thought that as well in here, let me know. Just, 
<laughs> so so I'm not the, 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 the only one that's talking about that, but I freaking love it, man. I freaking love it. Um, let me see. Yeah, fa uh, it's a very emotional movie. Man, I want that damn Umbrella box set so bad. I I can't even tell you. And again, again if anybody's watching, I'm, I'm going to throw some else out there. So, being a huge fan of Monkey Shines, I was like, you know what? I want to get that nice big box set from Umbrella. Because I like all the goodies, and it's cool to see that this movie got this kind of love. Like, I was just shocked. And as far, it's not a 4K, it's a Blu-ray, and it's actually the same Blu-ray as this. It's, it's it's no different. I think it's exactly the same, but it's got a hard box, it's got cards, it's got all this stuff. And I was like, man, like, do I want this? I do want it, but should I get it? Do I need it? I've got this. Like, it's really stupid if I get that. Like, I was just kind of talking myself in and out of it. Um, And I still want it. So I've been on Umbrella, like, probably over the last month. And I put it in my car, and then I put the Masters of the Universe bundle set in my cart. And the same thing, I was like, do I want the Masters of the Universe set? I said, I love that movie. You know, it's a cool-looking set. I have the Blu-ray already. I said, you know, if this was a 4K, I would have bit the bullet and just got it already. I'm like, do I, buy, do I just, like, double dip on another Blu-ray of Masters just to get, like, this fancy box? And so I had it in my cart, and then, you know, I was like, ah, I'll do it another day. So then, like, a week or so later, I go back on Umbrella. I'm playing the same game. I put my card in. Monkey Shines. Master Universe. Limited box sets. Having the same fight with myself about it. I was like, oh. I was like, I'm going to leave it in my card. I'll get it probably next week. So then all of a sudden, Umbrella changed the cover art for the Master set. And I was like, son of a bitch. I was like, I loved that artwork that they had on there. So then I was kind of like, oh, what the heck? So I was kind of bummed about it. And then after the Mario Brothers set started to become like really sought after, and I'm so happy that I bought it, that I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to get the damn Masters Universe set just because, again, it seems like people are really trying to get after some of these cool movies. So I went back on Umbrella today, actually, and it's sold out. Masters Universe bundle set is sold out. And I was kind of now bummed a little bit because I'm like, what the hell, man? Why did I wait so long to pull the trigger on this thing and now it's gone? So if anybody out there, for some reason, has an extra umbrella limited edition bundle set of Masters of the Universe, uh, hit me up if they have bought two for some reason. Um, because I am interested in it, you know, obviously for, for cost. Um, but let me know. And I do want the Monkey Shines too. I'll probably end up pulling the trigger. But I got to hurry up because I don't want it to just be gone and then me regret it. And to be honest, it's one of those purchases that it's I'm only getting it because they did a movie like this that I love so much. Right. Like they, they gave it love, which I don't think anybody else is going to give it to that extent. So I was like, I want to get it just because, you know, it, it was cool to see. A movie like this got so much love. So, again, it's a weird collector mentality thing, but that's my story regarding uh, Monkey Shines uh, because I did see somebody ask me if I get if I got it uh, on here, um, and I'll and I'll go to that comment in a second. Nick asked, uh, "What is Billy Jack about?" Um, it's it's an action movie, yeah. It's like about an Indian, um, and it, it's it's like very it's kind of political in a way, but the the scenes are really good. Um, there's like four movies, so they all kind of each have a different um, story, I guess you would say. But it's it's really good. It, it's it's one I highly, highly recommend. You can check out some trailers. Um, I like them all, but I would say the first two, Born Losers and Billy Jack, are my two favorites. Um, but I think all four of them are really, really well done. Um it's one of my all-time favorites too. Okay, that so slipcover Steve asked me. Um, I'm only gonna get the big box set. I don't. I wouldn't just get it with a slip. I'd get the whole the whole thing. Like I, I'm more into boxes than slipcovers. Of course, I've seen that. I've got the DVD. It was put out by Magnet. 
Uh, it's pretty cool. It's like a found footage type movie with these big trolls. Yeah, man. It's kind of one no one really talks about. Um, I agree, man. It's a, it's a, Monkey Shines is a great movie. Oh, I know. I gotta, I should probably just freaking get it. I should probably get it. Oh, man. A hundred percent. That is, if we talk about gateway horror, I didn't see Monkey Shines as a kid. But this is something that intrigued the hell out of me every time I went into that video store. I'll tell you that much. It's cool, man. I mean, it's different. It's different, but it's it's really, really cool. Oh, Romero's ex-wife played the nurse. I didn't know that. Okay, so good. So it's not just me who thought maybe Monkey Shines was a Stephen King book. Uh <laughs> you're right they don't do that anymore phenomena had a, had another monkey situation um yeah they don't do that anymore skeleton crew was the name of the book that that stephen king did um yeah that that confused the hell out of me man for sure and then like i said screen back uh fright rags put out some shirts and i don't think it had the title i think it just had the image so all you saw was the monkey image with the, the things, and I was like, oh, that's cool. They're doing a monkey shine shirt. Um, you know, <sighs> I agree to an extent, and when you add shipping, that's that it does get a little bit high. Now, the Super Mario Brothers set cost me about a hundred bucks, I think, because I had a promo code. Uh, and I think it brought it down a little bit. Now, was that expensive? Absolutely, for one movie. Absolutely. Um, it's a 4K, which is good. I think, right? Is it a 4K? Uh, I believe so. So that was an incentive. Because I do have a Blu-ray from Second Sight. So that was an incentive for me to get it. And at first I wasn't going to get the big bundle, but then when it said it had like this hardcover book and then it talked about, I think in there they were supposed to have like different screenplays that they were thinking about using. And that intrigues the heck out of me. Cause I'm like, I want to know more about like what else was brought to the table for this movie, because it's so off the wall that I was very curious to see like what the other options were for the Mario movie. Um, I know, man, I know I've got to get it. I've got to get it because, and, and that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to go nuts over it because I'm like, you know, they changed the box. I'm really into the new box art. It's got some booking cards, but I'm like, someone's probably going to do a 4k, which I could wait for. Um, What's up, Corey? Uh, yeah, I could easily do something like that and then maybe add some stuff in there. It's a lot of work. I mean, that, that's another reason why I don't do a lot of edited videos is because my windows are small. Um, so I can either come on live now or I can record now. But I feel like when I interact with you guys this late, it gives me more energy than if I was just sitting here talking to myself. And then in my head knowing, okay, well, then, I, then tomorrow when I find more time, I've got to edit this thing. So it just, I would rather just be able to pump out something then have to record, edit, and schedule. Like it's just it's it's just easier for me, but I know I should do both. Um <laughs> oh my god. I hope not. I hope not. Um I I think you should check it out. It's it's not what you think. I mean it's it's got it's a real good story as well. Um Yes, it was. Skeleton True. Yep. 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 <laughs> Deluxe Box Bob. Yeah, I like Deluxe Boxes for sure. Um, let me see. I do remember that. Um, I do not have the VHS, no, but I do have... I bought... Dead Pit's not that great of a movie. I bought the, the 4K. I think it's the 4K. Because it had like a limited glow in the dark slip cover, and it reminded me of that, so I bought it um, just for the just to basically have that glow in the dark effect, like I remember from the video store. Um, 
What's up, Nick? Um, do I think I don't? I I saw people posting about Immaculate, but I I don't know anything about it. Yeah, people were saying it was going for like between three and six hundred dollars. Man, I'm gonna say that He Man and the Master of the Universe with my with a first action figure line that I got into growing up, and it was everything to me. I needed everything. The, the, I had the figures, the the castles, the vehicles, and they're they're since long gone. And and unfortunately, I wish I still had them. So I ended up they they put out a new series called Origins, which is basically just updated versions of the old ones, which they are exactly the same, same packaging, same look, except I think there's a little more articulation. They're coming out with all the vehicles, basically everything I had as a kid, except they're putting them out now. And, um, again, and I started buying my son when he was born, like everything, because I'm saying, oh, you know what? I want him to get into these for his first action figure line. Like I did. And then I can play with him and it'll be fun. Like bringing back memories. And I bought him so many masters of the universe figures and vehicles. And I have castle Grayskull, I have snake mountain and he doesn't use it. He never uses them. So it just kind of sucks because I've spent like so much on all these masters toys for him hoping that he'd be into it but he's he's not i was a huge action figure guy he's not he's more into video games like super mario which again i was too but he's not into action figures i just guess kids don't have that imagination anymore like when i was a kid uh i like shockma i don't know man but i'll be the first one there if once we do get tmnt 90 um yeah, man, it was such a great time. Slime, uh, the slime pit and all that stuff. I can still remember the smell of uh, the slime. Um, okay, so guys, keep your eyes and ears open because I am going to do an epic subscriber unboxing soon. I have one, two, three, four packages right there. I've got, I think, another two that are coming. So subscribers have reached out to me and were like, oh, can I send you something? Or I heard you talk about this on a stream. I can get it for you. Would you want it? Like, And I don't have like a P.O. box or anything like that because I just don't want people to just send me tons of stuff that I'm not going to need. Because again, I don't have a lot of room for like, you know, sometimes people will send will want to send me like their DVDs of movie they've upgraded. And it's like, I don't need an, another collection per se. Um, so when people ask me, like they want to send me something or, Hey, I heard you talk about this in the show. You know, I kind of ask some questions first because I kind of want to know what it is that they're thinking about sending me. And uh, I do know that one of these boxes is the Slimer Cinemark popcorn bucket. So I will be unboxing all this stuff. I think some of the stuff I know it is. And there are some boxes over here that I don't know what it is. But I think it's going to be a pretty fun stream. So I want to kind of do it all at once. Like like uh, Christmas in March or something. But uh, if anybody has sent me anything, I cannot thank you guys enough. Or, you know, I, I feel super guilty <laughs> taking anything from you guys. But at the same time... The fact that you want to send that to me and it shows that you're listening and to the content and oh, Garrett said he needed this. I have an extra one. Let me see if he wants. Like, I, I appreciate it so, so much. And I think it's going to be real cool uh, to see some of the stuff that, that people are sending over. Um, Sorry, guys, I'm behind now. Uh, buh, 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 buh. <laughs> oh, man, it was so much fun. Uh, am I a big 4K collector? I don't care about it. I'm a 4K collector, but I don't care about it as, as much as others. I'll put it that way. So, like, it's funny because when it comes to... I'm a big boutique collector because I just like a lot of that stuff or maybe that stuff I've never seen, so I'm really intrigued by it. So if they have 4Ks or if there's 4Ks that have come out of movies I love, I'll get them. But when it comes to, like, studio release 4Ks, I don't buy a lot. Like, I probably have about 20 um studio release for oh i guess i lied i have about 20 state like regular editions i have a lot in in steelbook i buy a lot of like studio 4ks and 
limited steel books. So, uh, put it this way, I like them, but I don't care as much as most collectors. Um, I used to love those cops, man. I used to love those damn cops figures. I don't have any more, but they were so cool, man. So detailed. I mean, they were like, they were kind of tall. So cool. Um, man, it was, He-Man was everything to me. Um, I don't know. I don't know that band. Tokyo Motor? No. Um, I remember... I had the Dick Tracy figures. Yes, I did. I mean, trying to find that blank figure was like impossible. It's that thing is worth so much money. Um, dude, it was so, it was epic, man. John says Motu was his first line of figures too. He got them from a neighbor spread on the floor. Nice presentation. They still look great. Like even the new ones, the origin, they call origins. You'll probably see them at, I mean, damn, they have them on the shelf at Walmart. It looks just like the, the ones I was buying as a kid. Same thing, like they're so bright and they just look so cool hanging out there. I, I love them. Um, yeah, it is. The only thing, like, I was getting him everything. Like, I that's just you know, being a collector, I made sure he had like everything. So I have like the vehicles, the the castles, all the the toys. But then I started to kind of get out of it when they started doing like I didn't get Eternia, and I was gonna buy Eternia. But it was like, I don't know, 700 bucks, and it took up like half a room. So I was like, I can't buy this. It's, I don't have nowhere to put it. Like, it's going to take up his whole room. So I didn't get it, and I'm kind of was regretting not buying it because it was always something I wanted as a kid, and I just never had it. Um, but it's long sold out now, and I'll never get it. But I wanted it. And then they started to do like a lot of these other figures that weren't really in the first initial line, like Sun Man and all this other stuff. So... I started to kind of get out of it a little bit. And if I go to the store and I see like some classic characters that I had as a kid that I don't own now, I'll get them. Like I just saw um, there was a snake guy that has like these huge arms that I used to like use all the time. I used to wrap the arms around the figures. I just saw him at Walmart the other day and I snagged it um, just in case he does get into them. But um, yeah, the line is is really cool, but I, I don't go after everything anymore now because it's going to end. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to find that ghost trap bucket. Um, I'm going to try to find that. Oh, yeah, I love that thing, too. Okay. Who's D. Sibniber? Tell me what your first name is, just so it's, so it's an easier for me to call you. Can I call you DC? What do you want? Uh, quick question for you. What are your feelings on Fear No Evil? Currently checking it out on the out-of-print sale. My next pick, Fear No Evil. Um, This is one of my uncles who, I, if you guys don't know, I tell you all the time, my uncle's the one who got me into horror, hardcore into horror, hardcore into collecting. And his, one of his all-time favorite movies is Fear No Evil. The main character in here I also am a big fan of because of the movie Class of 1984. This is awesome, guys. This is a real cool movie. It's got great music in it, like punk bands, like Sex Pistols, a bunch of... Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other bands on the back that I'm not thinking of. Um, but this is cool. He's basically like Satan. Um, and it takes place in a high school. I highly recommend this. This is one that nobody ever talks about. Nobody ever talks about. Um, it's 81, so it feels kind of 70s still. Um, but it's got a real cool uh, gym scene that I think you guys are going to really like. Um, so yeah, Fear No Evil. I'm glad you brought it up, man, because you just helped me move on in, the, <laughs> in my list here. Um, oh, going out of print? Go, Guys, go get Fear No Evil. It's going out of print. I do. I used to collect those figures too. Um, dude, I had the. I loved Crash Test Dummies. I love those figures. <laughs> there was like a little little heavy guy. There was like a, the, the regular guys. Yeah, man. I didn't collect a lot of them, but like that was kind of on the tail end. I think of maybe when I was collecting. I don't remember, but I remember getting them at Kmart when I was a kid. And uh, was it Kmart or Ames? Maybe been Ames. 
bought the steel book of dread dread 2022 2012 is actually a good movie um so that's cool that's a cool movie um what the i don't know this one of the most unique toys in the 80s were bed were bugs rocks and things they're weird monsters that came with little gremlin with Dude, I'm gonna look that up. I don't even I don't know what that is, and I usually know a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I know. I know that now, but as a kid, I was like looking everywhere for that. But it's so wild that Yeah, so you said you didn't know that either. I remember trying I remember having my dad go to all these stores and I we only needed the blank. I had everybody else and we couldn't find it. I remember being so pissed. But come to find out they only released her in Canada, which was so wild. But if you had that figure, man, like what a unique concept because you could have gotten that figure before you saw the movie and basically spoiled the whole movie for you. You take his mask, his face off, and it's Madonna underneath. Like, it's wild to me. And there's actually a Madonna figure, like toy. I don't know. It's it's crazy. And that, that figure is still worth so much money. Um, I love the Visionaries. I like those too. Visionaries, were they the ones with the, the hologram on the chest? Was that the Visionaries? I think it was. I used to like the other ones. Um, I think they're coming back sectors. They were like bug guys. And like they had this spider that was a glove. And you put your hand in it and you would be the legs. And it would like you could put a guy on top of it. So you'd like move it around. But your hand would be in the legs of the skeleton. And it was really cool. Though. Like all the bugs were furry and stuff like that. It was really, really cool. I think they're coming back with that line. <laughs> my son didn't play with action figures either but i did make the... that's funny yeah i mean i'm hoping he gets into some of this stuff because it would be nice to be able to give them give it to him as like as i start to age away um it would fun it would be fun to have him maybe take over the channel at some point um but he's still so young but right now his his thing is he is mario insane right now um yeah, you know, I never got into Origins or any... Uh, is Origins the new one? No, Origins is the one I'm into. I never got into Classics or the new line, whatever the new line is called. Um, but Classics was a line I always wanted to get into, but they were so expensive at the time that I couldn't afford them, really. Um, so I never got into them, but they were a cool line, man. Oh, that's cool. 40th Anniversary Police Academy. Um... <laughs> she said, my grandma, my grandma poured slime down my pants as a joke as a kid and started bowling. <laughs> that had a great smell. I'm going to tell you a funny smell story about since we're talking about math. Man, this stream's going off the rails right now. Uh, we still got over 90 people in here. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It's late. We're talking like we're supposed to be talking Scream Factory. We're talking Masters of the Universe. Um, oh, the guy's name. Yeah, his name was Squeeze. Um, what was I getting? I was going to tell something. Okay, so funny story. Being such a huge fan of the Masters of the Universe figures as a kid, I remember getting Stinkor, who was that skunk, and he smelled awful. And I can remember as a kid, that was like the gimmick, is that he stunk. So to me, I always he always smelled bad because like the commercial and everything portrayed him to stink. So he had a really smelly smell to him. And I can remember years and years later, like, this was like, I was a little kid, maybe four, five. And then in middle school, I remember being on the bus. And all of a sudden, I got a whiff of like, that smell. I'm like, what is that smell? I know that smell. And a girl like walked on the bus. And I'm like, I know that smell. All of a sudden, I'm sitting there on the ride of, to school. And I'm like, oh my God, that smells like stink or What the hell is that? Who smells like that? And it was this girl that, on my bus that smelled like that. And I was like, why? What is that perfume? Why does she stink like that? Like, I remember being so confused, like, why she smelled so bad. And come to find out that the smell was patchouli oil that they used to make stink or stink. So this, this girl must have been wearing that. And it just sent, like, this weird sensation through my body of, like, being grossed out because as a kid that was like a skunk smell as what i was brought up to uh with with the stink or figure so just a kind of a weird story so every time i do smell that patchouli oil i think stink or still to this day it's kind of wild and they do have a new stink or that smells like that too 
smell isn't as strong as it was back in the day, but it's still they 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 tried. Nothing's ever as good as it was back then. Now everything is cut in corners. Uh <laughs> Dan. What's that from? Thanks, dude. Uh Yeah, you know what it is? It's like one of those things that the collector in me and thinking in my head like what I always wanted, it's like I'm trying to do for him. And like I don't want to spoil him per se. Um and I don't. It sounds like I do, but um but yeah, it's like one of those things like when I was a kid, it was like I wanted everything. And it wasn't that easy with me growing up. It's not like my parents had a lot of money and I got stuff all the time. It was like, you know, you had to, I had to wait for like Christmas or birthdays or I would even score some on Easter or whatever. But, you know, it wasn't that easy. Or like, you know, I would have, you know, to get a good report card, I'd be able to go get one, right? Like it was not that easy, especially being that, that little. Um, but yeah, so I, it's unfortunate that uh, he's not into them, but Again, looking at them and seeing them and having them, it just brings back a lot of memories for me too. So even if they end up in a box in my movie library room that I can go back and look at now and again, just for nostalgia purposes, like it's still looking at them really just still brings back a lot of cool vibes um, and feels, I guess you would say. Um, John folks, I heard red blank face wasn't. Yeah. It's so crazy. So crazy. So Saturn Video agrees. Fear no evil. Awesome. <laughs> I know, man. How do you like that? Um, No, don't let the Anchor Bay DVD fly because I think there's a feature on the Anchor Bay DVD that's not on here. Like a good feature. I think it's like um, I'm almost positive the Anchor Bay DVD has deleted scenes that this doesn't have. This doesn't have any features. It's a, it's a 4K master of the movie, which is great. Um. Yeah, there's no, there's no deleted scenes. I think this, I think I could, I'm not hundred percent, but I think the anchor bay has deleted scenes on it. Are we going to sell out fear no evil tonight? Is that what we're going to do on this stream? We have a tendency to do that. What up twisted girl. You got me twisted. I will look up that commercial. I do remember bionic six, but I didn't. They were made of steel. Was Bionic 6, what was the ones that were like scuba divers that had all these little holes in them? There was like a green guy. They were tall. Green, I think yellow and red. And then you would put all these pieces on them. Was that Bionic 6? Um, and humanoids were great. I used to have those big monsters as a kid. Like there was like this big green looking thing with like tentacles and stuff. That's sick, dude. Those are sick. Uh... Yeah, man, I'm going to, I mean, of course, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not just because it gets more money than I'm going to be spending, but I'm looking forward definitely to the Phantasm stuff and the Lost Boys stuff. Uh, the Slimer coming through the wall is awesome. I just don't have anywhere to put it. What? The blank card at a used media store for 10 bucks? If you bought that, dude, you freaking made out like a bandit. They're like literally going for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, I did a little bit, not totally. I mean, I had, I had like the main few. I had a couple villains. Um, what was the main villain's name? I liked him. He was. I had this one playset though, where you put like it was Mumra. Yeah, you put Mumra in, you twist it, and then you can. Then he comes out as the big guy. I thought that was a real cool thing. I had that playset. And I used to use that with my He-Man guys. Oh yeah, Masterverse. Yeah, I don't collect any of that. <laughs> no, you can only do it once. Everybody else has to do it. How many likes do I have, guys? I don't even. I can't see from there. Yeah, patrol, patrol oil. Yeah. Was it Stinko or Skunko? I think it was Stinko. No. Um. Dino. Yeah, his movie brought us into the genre of success. My was horror express late night tv when i was seven yeah man i would love to hear because and actually maybe doing a live is good because we're all different ages so we're gonna have different things that really got us into the genre 
72 likes, that's not bad. There's 90 people in here, guys. Keep going. If you haven't liked it, like it. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. That's pretty good. Let's see uh, Let's see if we get to 100 likes before I sign off tonight. Yeah, he was a repainted merman. Dude, people that are going to be watching this on the on the replay, I apologize. Because I think they're going to get Scream Factor and they're getting He-Man. Oh, my God. We need to just do like a nostalgia stream. So let me continue to move on. Oh, God. All right. The next one is another one. What year did this come out? It's going to be late 80s. Oh, 84. I think this is a Tom Holland movie as well. Let me just make sure. Yeah, written by Tom Holland. Tom Holland, man, kills it. Scream for Help. Uh, very cool movie. I liked this a lot. And when I bought this, I bought this on a blind buy. I'd never heard of this movie before. And I think I saw it on the Scream Factory site. And I was like, oh, I don't have that one. It's from the 80s. It's a slasher. I'll get it. Well, this is kind of a slasher, but also like a home invasion type movie as well. And like I said, Tom Holland, in my opinion, when it comes to writing and directing, like Tom Holland kicks ass. So I'm usually down with anything he does. And um, with that being said, I've thought about doing like a Tom Holland ranking on the channel because I'm just a big, such a big fan of his. But Scream for Help, this is one I highly recommend um you guys checking out it's basically about like a, a this wealthy woman and her daughter and she's dating this guy who the daughter kind of thinks is a creep and she's not sure if the guy only likes her mother for the money and all this kind of stuff uh ensues and i i really recommend screen for help i highly i think not a lot of people have probably seen that one um <clears throat> And I apologize. I'm going to skip over a lot of stuff because I need to get back. Let me just see if I see anything. Uh, oh, there you go. These are the guys I was talking about. Centurions. I used to have a couple of those guys. Um, tornado. Yes. Yeah, cy Cyclone. I still have my original him. Um, I do, Sydney. I do collect prop replicas. Yeah, I do have a great. I have a great phantasm uh, ball. Hold on. I'm not gonna get another phantasm uh, ball because I have one. Uh, I don't want to get it out. Um, if you go back, I did a video on it. I'm trying to think. Where did I do it? I don't want to pull it out, but um. If you're new to the channel, go check out uh, my movie room tour. You'll see it. It's um, I have a real prop replica of the original Phantasm Ball. It's killer. I would never get anything else. Oh, man, you do. You 100% need it. 100% need it. I agree. It, it, it uh, is the most lifetime style script. <laughs> It does feel kind of like a Lifetime movie, doesn't it? Is this real life? Did they really? No. That's so funny. Oh, it's supposed to be like the stepfather? Oh, yeah. I agree. Thinner is underrated. Basically, yep. Yep. All right, the next one is one I don't think a lot of people have seen. And it says, they brought you Jaws. Now present a major horror film, Snake. It says Snake on here, but the other title for it is this, which is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. So if you look on here, it says Snake. But if you look on here, it's so we, we, I la we laughed about this on Dead Pit when we did the the stream talking about like whatever year this came out. This was part of our Scream Factory history, and we were like, imagine going to the theater and just walk <laughs> walking up to the thing, like, oh, what do you want to see? Like it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. But this movie's awesome. This movie is so cool. Nineteen seventy three. Um, it's basically about like a carnival type thing. And there's this guy that has this exhibit about like these like human snakes and come to find out he's turning people into snakes and he kind of 
takes this kid under his wing and he's really just injecting him with a lot of the stuff to make him slowly turn into a snake and the kid starts getting like snake like tendencies it's pretty freaking cool man um but i highly recommend this it's very 70s so just keep that in mind if you're not a big 70s fan but uh because like i said it's early 70s so i mean it feels it but it's fun man this is really really cool movie um if you guys haven't seen it so i highly recommend as my number eight pick in this ranking <laughs> not ranking in this list oh man um let me see sorry guys i'm i'm losing everybody here um Slipcover Steve. Uh, I will tell you, Lady in White is not on this list, but I it will be shortly. And if I do a part two, if you guys like this, make sure to hit in the comments you want to see part two. But yeah, Lady in the White, Lady in White will definitely be in it. Um, I love that movie. I don't know. I only have the DVD. I don't think that has a. I, I can see Scream Factory or Kino putting that out. Oh, 101 Films did this as well. Dirk Benedict, is he in this one? I think he is. Yes, he is. Yeah, big fan. S yeah. <laughs> I don't know either. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, how do you even talk about the movie? Hey, you saw the movie, sis. Like, I, I just don't know what their plan was with that one. Uh, but yeah, that's a great one too. Uh, this one is an interesting one. Um, and I have a funny story about this, which is surprising. And that is going to be what? This is going to be 80s, right? 80s, 80s, 80s. Uh, this was from what year did this come out? Oh, 78. Wow. All right. Number nine is 1978. The Manitou. The Manitou is a real, real cool movie. Um,. It's freaking bonkers. I'll tell you that much. For some reason, as much as this is very different, I always like in my head, I'm always like, I always think like the Manitou and Extra are like such a great double feature, even though it's very different. But there's very there's a lot of similarities to the tone of these movies, in my opinion. So I always like put these two together. Like I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna watch Extra and Manitou tonight. I'm, like a little double feature. It just goes really well together. Um but I, I, this movie is freaking batshit. Like, it really, really is. Oh, somebody said Manitou is also going out of print. I would say get it. <sighs> Again, this isn't one that I'm going to think is for everybody. But it's cool. And I'm going to tell you a funny story about this movie. So, like I said, growing up, my uncle, so big into horror. So big into horror movies. And he got me into horror movies. He had a great VHS collection. He used to record. He used to record VHS. Like, I think he would. I'm trying to think. He would like illegally do it. I think like not off TV, but I think he would like buy. He would rent it and then record it. I don't know something because he had all these like recorded. He had a bunch of VHS tapes as a kid. I remember. Then he had these boxes of like with like brown covers, and he he wrote like the name of the movie and the date. And they were all like recorded VHS tapes. And they were all in like these like same brown like snap cases. And he had them lined up like on a shelf. It almost looked like they were like encyclopedias because they all matched and it had like the name of the movie. So he used to get these somehow. And um, so anyway, when we were kids, he had a video camera that he would bring out on holidays. And... There was this video, home videos of like my brother and I when we were little, like I think I was three. My brother was like one and it was from the 80s and it would be like, you know, Christmas 1985 or whatever. And then birthday or whatever. So my uncle used to, well, Thanksgiving 1986 or whatever it is. So my uncle used to videotape the holidays and he had like this one tape that all of them were on. And he had made us copies of them. So he gave one to me, one to my brother, one to my mom. So basically, like, I have this these home videos growing up. And he didn't do it a lot. He, he only did it 
for a couple years, like in the eighties. So I only, it's not like I have every year growing up, just a couple. Cause we used to do a lot of parties at my grandmother's and that's where at the time he had lived. Cause, um, he was a little younger than my dad. So like he was still living there. So he was like in his early twenties when I was a little kid. And, um, when I got the, when we got the home videos, you'd watch all the different home videos. And at the end of the home videos, it'd be over. And then you got, it, it was like he taped over Manitou. So after the home videos, you got like this clip of clips from this movie Manitou. So growing up, when my brother and I would watch these home videos, we'd always get clips of Manitou right afterwards. And we were always like freaked out by it. But we never knew what it was. Like we never knew what that movie was. And then when we were like older, and I think I was really heavily collecting movies. My brother was like, remember that movie with the Indian that like used to be at the end of like the home videos? And I was like, oh yeah. So I remember like Googling it, like horror movies from 80s with Indian, blah, blah, blah. And then I found Manitou and I had never seen it. And I can remember, or I said movies from 70s and 80s or whatever. And I looked up the trailer and we're like, that's it. So we tracked down the DVD and really loved it. And it's almost like we finally get to put the pieces together of what this movie was that we had seen pieces of for so long in our life because it was like I'm tacked on the end of our home videos. So wacky story. Hopefully you guys like enjoy weird stories like that. I like hearing about them, but super wacky story when it comes to the Manitou. So I've been a fan of it for a long time because it to me it has so much weird nostalgia for me growing up. Um, so yeah, anyway, let me, let me see what you guys have to say. Uh, lady white. Oh yeah. There was a, there was a, I have a couple, there was like an MGM DVD. There was like an elite DVD. That was the rare one. The elite one was the director's cut. Um, I think it's rare though. At least the screen factory one is extras. Fantastic. Extras. Fantastic. So Rob agrees with me on the double feature. Dude, for real. Imagine being a little kid and seeing some of that. <laughs> it's definitely a fever dream movie. 100%. I mean, I, I agree. If you guys are on the Screen Factory site now and there's, they're doing an auto print sale, I haven't gone on there. I should go check it out, actually, and, and check it and see what's on there. Um, but Manitou, Fear No Evil, yeah, get them. Um. Hey Nick, happy birthday, man! Oh, that's awesome, dude. It's it was so important to me to have him because he really got me into wrestling, horror, and working out. So those three things are so big in my life still that I I do I'm, I am glad to have someone that was into that stuff because it really got me into it. And collecting too. Um. <laughs> it was perfectly legal to record VHS tapes for video storing, personal viewing. Mr. Rogers helped me with the court case. Oh, that's awesome, man. Wow. Man, imagine that would have been amazing to have access to, to all those videos. <laughs> Dude, for real. Home videos in Manitou. <laughs> a fan of two of the man of two it's so weird man you're right like and that's why like i was talking about like how much things like the gateway horror the kinder trauma stuff really means to me because it just it, it, it shapes you right and it's it's memories like i never will forget manitou based on just that silly thing that every time we watched the home video we were like we didn't want to get to the end because as soon as it ended, we were like, shut it off because like we started to see the end of the Manitou at the end. So we used to try to get it off quick. Cause like we're, we're little kids. We were like freaking petrified. Um, you know, man, I haven't watched extra two in a long time. Is that, is that good? I have a double feature. I think it's extra two and three um, on DVD. Yeah, man. Happy birthday, Nick. Wish Nick a happy birthday guys. I have one more to talk about. We've been on here for almost for an hour and 40 minutes. We still have over 90 people in here. We haven't crossed the 100. Uh, one, now I'm getting tired. We haven't crossed 
the 100 mark yet, but we have been hanging around 90 all night. So, guys, thank you so much for hanging with me. We got one more to talk about, and I've mentioned it on the show before, and it's from 1983. And it's un of unknown origin, starring Peter Weller. If you know me, you know I'm a huge Peter Weller fan. And this is a kick-ass movie. Um, I absolutely love this. And if you know my love for Firstborn, this came out, I, I think this came out first, actually. So I guess my logic doesn't even make sense. But... My friend and I that are such big Firstborn fans always say that that we feel like this is like the unknown sequel to Firstborn because like if you think about the character of uh, Peter Weller's in Firstborn, it's very similar to this. And at the end of Firstborn, Peter Weller's character kind of drives off and disappears. And we were like, imagine if he moved away to like get away from everything that happened and like started his new life here because he still kind of comes off the same kind of bullshit or way. And it just makes it so much more fun to think it's the, to like almost feel like it's the same character. I don't know, but this is a real, real cool movie for anybody who hasn't seen of unknown origin. Um, it took me a while to give this one a shot because I had the DVD in like a snapper case that I bought at like a used store one time, but like the, the cover art never really did it for me. Then finally I watched it and I was like, oh shit, this was awesome. And then they, they announced a Blu-ray, so I ended up picking that up. So I don't know if this is on the out-of-print sale, but if it is, highly recommend it. Um, Saturn Video, dude, me and Saturn are like right on with what we like. We, we're very similar um, style of movies, I feel like, because he's digging a lot of the stuff I'm talking about here. Just watch that again. Contender for G Georgie P. Cosmato's best movie, honestly, so damn good. Yes. So you did again. I'm always confused. I'm always concerned because Firstborn is like, I don't know if people get it. It's not a horror movie. It's kind of like a like a cool lifetime movie, really. That's kind of what it feels like. Um, but I think Peter Weller's performance is so great in it that I, I highly always recommend it because it's like when I saw it for the first time, I was like, wow, I can't believe I never saw this. It was so entertaining. Um, Vice Squad is going up. <laughs> oh really? I never, I never seen the trailer for it. Oh hell yeah, baby, hell yeah! So again, that was my ten non-collected edition Screen Factory movies that I highly recommend. And it seems like there is an out of print sale right now, or going out of print sale on Screen Factory. So hopefully, if you guys watch this tonight or on the replay. You can get some recommendations, some rad recommendations to grab some of these titles before they go out of print. Because in my opinion, these are 10 great films and from the Screen Factory line. And I'm going to continue with this series because there's so many non-collected edition stuff in that, in that library that I could definitely talk about. So guys, thank you so much for hanging with me tonight. Hit that like button on the way out if you have not. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Like I said, we've got some cool stuff coming. The Scream Factory Year 7 show is coming. We talked about the Gateway Horror show going live and doing it there. I have a recorded episode that I'm going to do talking about the wildness of... Um, like, product placement in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, in some of these movies, especially two big ones that I'm going to kind of go head to head against and talk about, which I think is pretty damn cool of a concept because that was, I'm such a sucker for product placement. Like me personally, such a sucker for product placement, uh, in movies. And every time I saw something, I was like, oh, I definitely wanted, I want it. Like, I mean, man, talk about wrestling as a kid. I was eating Slim Jims like they're going out of style thinking I was going to look like the ultimate warrior if I kept eating those things. So I'm huge into product placement. Uh, and movies and i want to talk highly about it in kind of a long form video so guys thank you again for checking this out i had such a blast with you let's do it again and let's do like a just a regular q a one next time and we'll talk about all this nostalgia mass of the universe and us growing up and some of the nostalgia stuff that uh, i love talking about so man thank you all so much i appreciate all your support 
as always, this is Garrett at Born to Be Rad. And like always, stay. <laughs>